Welcome back, Agora community. In our last video, Anna White, supervising animator at Agora Studio, showed us how to add that extra polish to walk cycles to make them stand out. But some of you might have been wondering after watching that video, what is a sticky mod and how do I use it anyway? In this video, we are going to cover what sticky mods is, show you some ideas on what they can be used for, and give you a tutorial on how to get started using it. Sticky Mod is a deformation tool created by Friggin' Awesome Studios that allows you to move around the geometry of an object or rig. It's an amazing free resource for adding that extra polish to your animated shots to make them stand out. It has many uses, and artists have come up with their own unique ways of using this free tool for their specific needs. We asked the team at Agora Studio, how do you use Sticky Mods, and what are some things to be aware of? And if you have ways that you use Sticky Mods that aren't mentioned here, be sure to add them in the comments for everyone to see. First, let's talk about some of the potential downsides to using Sticky Mods. Vincent Plant, animator at Agora Studio, gave this advice for animators that are just learning about stickies. It can be tempting to look at such a powerful tool and want to use it everywhere, but my biggest thought would be to not go too crazy with it and to first check if the rig can do what you want it to do before going the tool route. You're probably going to confuse yourself if you have too much going on in your scene. Animation supervisor Rafaela Berdis seconds this advice. I generally try not to use them too much since the scene can get quite heavy quite fast. I always try to achieve the result with the controls available, request additional controls if in production, and only use stickies as a last option. Animation supervisor Remy Comtois shares a specific scenario of why he may not use stickies. Be aware of the limitations of your project. For example, I've worked on a project where we animated with an animation rig, which was then swapped with the render rig at Publish. Meaning any sort of deformers we did on the animation rig, like sticky mods, will not transfer to the render rig when we publish. So as you are playing around with sticky mods, just keep these tips in mind. Remember, it's an extremely useful tool, but you might cause yourself a headache if you overuse it or if your current production pipeline doesn't align with using it. So what are some good uses for sticky mods? Here's just a few ideas. Animation supervisor Alejandra Alvarez had this to say about the tool. I use it for anything, pushing facial expressions when rigs are limited, mouth shapes, really anything you need, but it's dependent on if the production supports stickies. Rafaela also mentions, I use stickies mostly for polish to add the last little touches, like skin being pushed in on contact, or if there's no other way to create the shapes I need. Remy gave us quite a few examples of what stickies can be used for. Stickies are great for areas where there's skin, cloth, sofa, or anything else being affected by the contact. I usually like to paint the weight of the sticky as well if you need a specific shape such as in the hand or anything else that gets in contact. I'll also use them if I'd like to push a face muscle in a particular way or animate anything that I don't have a control for. And any kind of smear frame where you wanna pull on vertices or stretch the geo, stickies are a great way to do it. And of course, Anna White showed us in our previous video how she uses it to add squash and stretch to the feet in a walk cycle for a more weighty feel. We also opened up the question to our community members on social media, and we got even more cool ideas. Mark Pert is a principal animator at Rebellion, and he says, I've used sticky mods for breathing and little muscle jiggles where I could. Fantastic tool. Aaron Baker, lead animator at Jellyfish Pictures said, I mostly use it for fixing intersections where rigs don't provide enough controls to address it, in clothing, for example. Want to start playing around with the tool yourself? Here's how to get Sticky Mod set up for your project. First, you'll need to get the necessary files from Friggin' Awesome Studios' Gumroad page. To save you time, we included a link to the Gumroad page in the description below. It will download as a zip folder, which you will need to extract. Once you've unzipped the file, inside you will find another folder called JS underscore Sticky Mod. We're going to copy and paste this folder into your Maya Scripts folder. While you're in that folder, open up the document titled Instructions. In there, you will see a segment of code that is necessary to run Sticky Mods. Just copy this code and then open up a new Maya scene. Once your Maya scene is open, you're going to open up the Maya script editor, which you will find at the bottom right of the Maya window. In Maya script editor, click the second tab called Python and then paste that code that you copied earlier here. From there, you can either click this double arrow icon to run the Python code or select all of the code and middle mouse drag it to the shelf at the top of your window to make a button. 
If you go with the second option of making a shelf button, don't forget to right click the button, select edit, and give it a name and icon so you recognize it later. Now Sticky Mods is all set up. If you click that button, you'll get a pop-up window with the Sticky Mod options. Now that you've got Sticky Mods installed, let's talk about how to use it. For this demonstration, we are using the Alpha Rig, which you can find on our website. Whatever you're using Sticky Mods for, you'll first need to select a vertex on the geometry you are wanting to modify. But you might notice that when you click Alpha's geometry, nothing happens. That's because the rigger made the geo unselectable so that the animator isn't constantly selecting a piece of geo instead of a control. But since we need to make the geo selectable, we're going to go into our outliner and find the geo we want from within the rig's hierarchy. In this case, I am looking for Alpha's head geo. Once you have found it, you are going to go over to the channel box and select the attribute editor tab here. From there, expand object display, then the drawing overrides dropdown. You will see an option called Enable Overrides. Check this box, and then there you go. Alpha's face geo is now selectable. Next, select the vertex you would like to work with, and then we'll click the Create Sticky Mod button. On that vertex you selected, there will be two important controllers for you to understand. First, you have the actual mod, which is what is deforming the geometry. Then you have the mod offset, which is this sphere here. It allows you to adjust the areas affected by the mod. The Sticky Mod has these attribute options available to you, such as falloff radius, which lets you adjust the size of the falloff area. You'll see the size of the offset sphere also changes when you change the falloff radius. There is also falloff mode, with the options of volume and surface available to you. Then you have falloff curve, which determines the way the falloff blends with the geometry. You have a few options. Spline, Smooth, Linear, and None. There are also a few other attributes for turning off the sphere's visibility, to change the mod handle to a NURB curve instead of a locator, and whether or not you can see the local rotation axis of the mod. You should play around with these and see what works best for you. Something to note if you are making a sticky mod using multiple selected vertices. If you select multiple vertices, sticky mod will automatically default to the last vertex selected. So like if you selected this bundle of vertices here, it might default to one along the edges since those were most likely the last in the selection. So if you selected a group of vertices and want it to be centered on the vertex in the middle, just deselect the vertex you want, then reselect it again so that it is now the last one selected in this bundle of vertices. Now when you create the sticky mod, it is controlling this whole area and centered around the last vertex in the middle. And don't worry if you no longer see the mod offset sphere. When you create a sticky mod with multiple vertices, it automatically turns off the sears visibility and makes it much bigger than before. If you prefer to be able to see it, just turn the visibility on and you can change the sphere's size with the falloff radius. Was there anything we missed? Don't forget to add it in the comments. And if there's any other tool you'd like us to cover, be sure to let us know. Hearing from you helps us know what other information we can share to help you reach your animation goals. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned and stay animated.